the pecan corner. I'm Tina and today I'm going to make uh, pecan pralines. This is my, I'm going to use my mother's recipe and it's one that she got from a cookbook that my great-grandmother had. Um, and this is an old, it's, the, the cookbook is an old New Orleans cookbook. So these are true Creole pecan pralines and these are the soft ones that we like. They're not chewy at all. Um, they just melt in your mouth. So um, I got her to write it down for me so that I wouldn't lose it. And uh, bear with me because this is the first time I've ever made these. So um, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how well I can do. All right, I've got, um, I'm going to mix, uh, th I've got three cups of brown sugar. And y'all know if you've been watching me, I only use cane sugar. Because uh, if it doesn't say cane sugar on the box, it may be beet sugar. There's nothing wrong with beet sugar except that nowadays beet sugar may be GMO beets. So um, that so we always look for pure cane sugar. Um, and there are several brands that offer that. I've already made my, um, my Martha Washingtons and just finished the last batch of them. So you can see my little, my little chocolate pot sitting over here cooling off while there's a little chocolate left in there. I'm trying to decide whether I want to uh, dip something in it or, or just melt it back into a, a container and, and put it in the freezer until I need it again. Okay, I've added three cups of, of brown sugar, one fourth cup of butter, that's a half a stick of butter, and I'm going to add one cup of uh, cream. And this is heavy whipping cream. You can also use half, she's got a note here that says half and half works just fine. One carton of whipping cream equals one cup. I have a real problem finding whipping cream that does not have uh, mono and gly gly diglycerides, polysorbate 80, and carrigian in it um, anymore. I don't know what's happened. I can buy sour cream that doesn't have additives, but I can't buy buttermilk that doesn't have additives. I can buy milk that doesn't have additives, but not cream. So I don't know what's going on there, and I'm still looking for a for a good source of pure whipping cream that does not have extra junk in it. In the meantime, we use what we have. So, I have a full cup of cream, three cups of brown sugar, and a quarter cup of butter. And I'm going to uh, immediately start stirring this. I don't want to let my sugar ever melt on the bottom of a pan. Uh, if you dump it in there, whether you're making jelly or, or something like this, um, because it'll it'll harden on there and you'll never get it off um, so I keep it stirred now I'm going to uh, stir this and I'm going to bring it to what they call softball stage which means when you drop a, a little dab of it into uh, uh, cold ice water it'll turn into a soft ball but I'm going to use my candy thermometer and uh, it's actually marked softball but if you're looking at the candy thermometer, the markings on it are really confusing. Um, it, it's hard for me to tell where those little things are. And so I've actually put used a Sharpie and, and put a mark on there where it'll make it easier for me to see. Um, I, I had a failure um, the last time I tried made fudge. It's the first time I've had a failure with my fudge. And it's because I misread, um, I misread my candy thermometer. So... I'm going to drop this down in here and uh, put this thermometer there in the bottom of it and just let it sit and cook. That's going to be a while so I'll come back when I'm a little bit further along. I have to tell you this, this last few seconds of waiting to try to get the uh, temperature up is um, almost as bad as, as going traveling. You know when you're traveling somewhere and you uh, uh, or, or you're just nearly there. Okay, all right, now I've finally gotten it. Now then, um, turn my fire off because I don't want it to get any hotter. I'm going to set it off the stove. I need one eighth of a teaspoon of uh, ground cinnamon. So that's just going to be literally a dab like that. Um, measure it in advance if you, if you want. And now I'm going to add a cup and a half of pecans. These are my little. These are some of my little natives that uh, we've been cracking and, and picking out. Uh, this is the tree I was telling you. I've got another video 
um, that you'll see where I'm gathering pecans, and it's where I'm gathering those these little native pecans, and, and they are tiny, but oh, they're so flavorful because they're full of um, they're full of oils. Um, okay, now I'm gonna. It says. Um, um, beat them until they're almost cold and then drop by, by spoons full on the wax paper. So I've got my wax paper set over here, so I'm going to stir these. Um, but the pecans are, uh, they were such an important food for uh, the primitive people when they lived here in the country um, before Europeans came. Um, Nunes, um, uh, uh, Oh, what's his name? Nunes de Vaca. Is it de Vaca? Hold on, let me go get a thing while I can see. I can't remember the man's name. His name is, is Nunes Cabeza de Vaca, which means um, head of the cow. And he was shipwrecked um, in the uh, 1530-ish, um, shipwrecked um, and, and walked across Texas and, and finally got back uh, down to Mexico City and, and got to go home to Spain. But he wrote um, his his uh, experiences, and it's a wonderful book. If you ignore the um, ignore the introduction and and the modern footnotes that try to uh, uh, interpret <laughs> what he wrote and just take him at face value, you'll get a much better sense of what life was really like. Uh, when Europeans came. He was the first European to come to Texas and uh, and he was alone. So uh, his experiences were really interesting. But what he mentions uh, pecans and uh, talks about the tribes that, that uh, he, some of the tribes let, let him live with them and some of them enslaved him. And, but the ones that he was with at the time, they traveled, they had to travel different places to get their food. Because remember, they didn't have the horse so they didn't have any motor transportation other than their feet. So they, while they did some hunting, um, mostly they were they were hunting, they were gathering uh, to try to stay alive, and it's hard to gather enough. Um, so, plus there was a huge amount of competition from other tribes, so it was a very brutal life. But they did um, travel to a place to get pecans when it was pecan season. So during the time that they were uh, that he was with them, they would they would travel to these places. Of course, if it was a bad year for pecans, they didn't have enough to eat that year, and so they went hungry. Um, so the pecans were extremely important crop um, for those peoples, and they remain so today. An old pecan tree, um, the older it gets, the better it bears. So if you were planning on doing any kind of homesteading or even in your yard, if you want to provide for yourself, the best thing you can plant is a nut tree. Whatever kind of nuts are native uh, to your area because that gives you a huge source of calories uh, that, are, that are growing naturally without you having to do anything to them uh, to get them. The oils and, uh, and the healthy... Uh, uh, amino acids and, and uh, uh, such are are just so bountiful in, in these nut trees. So if you're thinking about what kinds of trees to plant on your property, um, you just can't go wrong with some kind of nut trees. So do keep that in mind. Okay, as you can see here, this is uh, starting to thicken up. So I'm going to start dropping it out by spoonfuls. out some more uh, I'm gonna have to pull out some more wax paper real quick I'm making these our farmers market is having a holiday market uh, this week so um, I'm making these to take to that, and uh, like I said earlier, I've made some uh, Martha Washingtons to take to sell. I've got my, I've got gift baskets made up. Oh, I'll show you one of those. I've got gift baskets made up with my 
uh, my wild jellies. Okay, let me put out some more paper real quick. And um, I'm just going to lay it here on the counter. Oh, I don't need to get that out of the can. what I mean about having things ready. <laughs> it's real important when you're making candy or making jellies to have everything ready in advance. Oh, I'll look at that one. I'm sure that'll make him happy. It's going to be great. And you can use light or dark brown sugar for these. Just um, um, try, you know, try them and see which ones, which one you prefer. It because it just depends on your own personal taste. How much of that? I like that uh, that molasses flavor in things. Um, it's just, of course, I'm from the South. You know, if you didn't grow up with cane sugar and molasses. Um, you might not like it so well. Okay, I'll be back when they're cool and show you what they look like. Okay, here's the final result. These are, um, like I said, I use dark brown sugar, so that's why they're so dark. If you like a lighter product, use a light brown sugar. And I need to learn uh, to stop um, stirring a little bit sooner. I waited a little bit too long to pour these. They taste fabulous. Um, they, uh, let me show you how they break one open. See, they break real easily. They're very soft and very tender. And they, uh, so they break just, the texture's just perfect. Um, I just, I just beat them a little bit too long before I, before I, uh, uh stopped and started pouring them. I've got here, um, I'm going to, I've already made my label, so I'll fix some plates of these to sell at our, uh, at our farmer's market, Christmas market. I've got my Martha Washington's ready, my tea mixes that, uh, you've got videos for the Martha Washington's and videos for the tea mixes, and for, for making the different jellies. This is, this is how I made up my, my jelly gift baskets. Um, uh, these are, um, really nice little basket. I bought the baskets. These are handmade by the Texas Basket Company in um, Jacksonville, Texas. And it's a company that dates back to 1919 and they still make them by hand there. Now even Basketville has started importing all their baskets from China. But uh, but this company still makes them here and it's just a little, you know, it's just a little stapled uh, wood lath peach basket. But it's cute and it, it adds a little bit of value um, a value for the uh, for the jellies. So I have uh, six jellies in the basket, and I sell these for forty-five dollars. I've got them shrink wrapped. I normally sell each uh, individual jelly for five dollars each. So um, it, it just it just upsells a little bit, and I make my own little flower. All that is is some cotton batting with uh, some scraps of material around it, and just wired uh, together into a flower. So. I will have, we're looking forward to uh, our, uh, our our holiday market uh, in a few days, and uh, I'll probably try to get some video uh, of it there so that we can show you guys. It'll be after Christmas before we get it uploaded, but at least uh, you'll be able to see it for next year. Um, all right, uh, you guys take care, and thanks a bunch, and I hope you'll enjoy my mother's Creole pecan pralines. Thanks.